I didn't see you. Well, because you all look so excited to learn about quantum mechanics, I won't stall anymore. We will be continuing on from last lesson and we will begin by talking about atomic orbitals. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that you cannot know with certainty both the position and the velocity of an electron. An orbital is a region of space where the electron is likely to be located. This is also called the probability distribution map. These orbitals are derived by solving the Schrodinger equation. Now, don't worry, you do not need to know how to solve this equation, but it is important for you to know before we delve into the next portion of this lesson. If you are able to plot a single electron, for example, a hydrogen atom, at a single point in position, and you kept plotting this electron at new positions, the end result would be a probability distribution map of that electron, which would be a 3D map of all the places the electron could probably be located. So as I mentioned, we will not be going into the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, but instead we'll be focusing on the probability distribution maps, or also known as the orbitals. When talking about the orbitals and characterizing them, we will go over four numbers, which are known as quantum numbers. Three of these numbers are going to describe the orbital itself, and the fourth number will describe the orientation of the electron. Before we talk about these quantum numbers, I want to first introduce an analogy that will help you better understand quantum numbers. So let's talk about an address for a moment, because each component of an address is vital for giving a location of where a place or someone is located at. If you had a meeting for a job and the company only told you it is in Orlando, Florida, could you locate where your meeting was going to be? Well, no, you could not. The only thing you could identify is that the city it was in. Well, the second thing they would give you is a zip code. Well, that's wonderful because now you have identified a region in the city where it could potentially be. The next piece of information that is provided is the street name. Well, that's better, but still not great because you are still unsure where the meeting is located. So all you are missing is the street number, because this is the last piece to the puzzle that you need to identify where your meeting is at. So you can probably assume at this point, the quantum numbers that we will be covering will be similar in a way to characterize the orbitals and probable location of the electron. The first quantum number, which is denoted by n, is also called the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number corresponds to the size and energy of the orbital and can be equal to any integer that is greater than or equal to 1. This quantum number is the city because it is describing the energy level in which the electron is located at either closest to the nucleus, which would be n is equal to 1, or further away, which might be denoted by n is equal to 2, 3, etc. We have seen n before in an earlier lecture. Do you remember? Yes, this is the same n that we saw from the Bohr's equation. The second quantum number is the angular momentum quantum number, which is denoted by L, which denotes the shape of the orbital. This quantum number is calculated by L is equal to 0 to n minus 1, including all integers in between. Each calculated value of L corresponds to a specific orbital shape. When L is equal to 0, this is an s orbital. When L is equal to 1, this is a p orbital. When L is equal to 2, this is a d orbital. And when L is equal to 3, this is an f orbital. It is important to know which value of L corresponds to the shape of the orbital. This quantum number is like the zip code because now we are identifying which orbital this electron can be located at. The third quantum number is the magnetic quantum number, which is denoted by ML, which determines the orientation space of the orbital. So this denotes where on the XYZ plane this orbital lies upon. It is extremely, I mean extremely important to note that each orientation of an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. I will repeat this once again. 
each orientation of an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So the magnetic quantum number is like the street address because we have now narrowed down the location even further. In order to calculate ML, it is negative L, including zero, to positive L. So for example, if we have L is equal to two, so a d orbital, what are the allowed ML values? Well, it would be equal to negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. How many orientations does the orbital have? Well, it had a total of five. So what is the maximum number of electrons that can be held within the d orbital? Well, remember, each orientation can hold two electrons. So 10 electrons can be held in the d orbital. Let's do another one. Let's say we had a p orbital, so L is equal to 1. ML would be then be equal to negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So it has three different orientations in space and can hold a maximum of six electrons because each individual orientation can hold two electrons. So those three quantum numbers that we've described so far describe the orbitals. So the last quantum number represents spin, which is denoted by ms which specifies the orientation of the electron in the orbital. An electron can be spin up, which is denoted by positive one half, or spin down, which is denoted by negative one half. These are the only values that are allowed for spin. So in the previous analogy, the spin would represent the street number. So now that we understand each quantum number, now let's go over a few pieces of information and definitions. A shell is any orbital with the same value n, and a subshell or orbitals with the same value of n and l. So you must be thinking, what do these orbitals actually look like? Well, let's start with the s orbital, which is the lowest energy orbital. This orbital is a spherically symmetrical orbital. So going back to the orientation of this orbital in space, so ml, if I was to rotate it, would you be able to tell that I did so? Well, no, you wouldn't, because it is all symmetrical. It looks the same. Also, for an s orbital, l is equal to 0 and ml is also equal to 0. For the p orbital, so when l is equal to 1, we saw earlier that it had three orientations in space, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. The p orbital kind of looks like a peanut and each lobe is a region of electron density. And if we were to rotate this, there would be three different orientations on the XYZ plane. So you have the PX, which lies on the X axis, PY orbital, which lies on the Y axis, and PZ orbital, which lies on the Z axis. The last orbital we will focus on is the D orbital, which as we went over earlier, has five orientations in space and it kind of looks like a daisy. The orientations are as followed. dxz, dyz, dxy, dx squared minus y squared, and dz squared. And if you combine them all together, you get a dog. <laughs> but -bum I'm kidding, there is no dog orbital. So I know today's lesson was a little lengthier than the ones previous, but please make sure you re-watch this lesson if you missed anything. Please write down any questions you may have so we can review it in lecture. Also, watch the corresponding worked out problems so you can see how everything ties together. Thank you and have a wonderful day.